Hey, just want to point out something real quick. Uh, just, it's easy on a service call to get tunnel vision and think that we fixed the problem. Uh, this one I went in on, I had quickly identified that it was the uh, check valve that had broke right at the air compressor, and it was pretty obvious that that was the problem. That's why the you know system tripped. I repaired all that, but I went ahead and put uh, air back on the system, and I locked it in for a half an hour and uh, did some other stuff. And when I went back and checked it, I'd lost some air pressure. So I went ahead and searched around and, and I found a leak. So just pointing out, you know, it's just real easy to get tunnel vision and think, oh, that's all it is, is this broke, this will be an easy fix. But if you got the time, I know, you know, in the middle of the night, we don't want to sit around for a half an hour. But, uh, you know, if you can maybe put air on it, lock it in, go fill out your uh, uh, T&M ticket or whatever you got to fill out paperwork wise and then put your tools up maybe, you know, just waste a little time that way and then check your gauge. Just, I mean, you know, even if you can let it sit for 15 minutes, but just try and uh, make sure you don't have any other leaks before you walk away. Uh, you know, it's always embarrassing to have the customer call you back the next day uh, and say, hey, you know, that compressor is running a lot or we found this leak or whatever. So just uh, throwing that out there, it's always a good idea. So. I uh, hope you guys watched uh, this video. I hope you enjoy it, and thanks for watching. Got a phone call around 7 this morning from the customer advising that the uh, fire alarms were going off and they couldn't get them to stop. He advised he had a couple problems, that last night the alarms were acting up, and then when he came in this morning, the fire alarms were going off, but the fire department never showed up. Well, come to find out, last night at 10.20, they got a low air alarm and they silenced it and they called the alarm company and told them to put it on a 24 hour disregard. But they did not say just the trouble, they put the whole system on disregard. So about an hour later, the system tripped and that set off the fire alarms, but obviously the fire department was not called because the system was put on test. So when I got here, um, well, this, when he called, I walked him through shutting the dry system down, and then he advised that the air compressor wasn't shutting off, even though we had, you know, I had him close the airline, um, so I had him shut the breaker off. So when I got here, what I found was that, uh, looking through the alarm panel, I realized the times that, you know, the low air came in at 1020, and it's about an hour later that the fire alarm came in. So we lost our air pressure in an hour. Um, going from low air to trip. Now that could be because the low air is set too low and maybe we're set really close to the trip pressure. Um, but uh, what I found here is that the airline's broken on the air compressor. And as you can see, right here, uh, it broke off. So that's why the compressor wouldn't shut off. It couldn't get a reading over to the pressure switch. Uh, it looks to me like somebody has modified this once before. Maybe this has happened before. Because um, that's more of a circ check. And I would have to look up this compressor and see for sure. But typically you don't see a circ check in there. You see more of the uh, Kingston type uh, checks in there. Uh, I would, But again, I would need to look this up to verify that. But I can tell this is, this is not factory. This has been added. Um, Probably the reason is this is all hard piped all the way back to the dry valve, and it's only about seven feet of pipe or so. So you got a lot of vibration there, and that's probably why it's breaking. Ideally, what I would do is, um, you know, get this fixed, and you need some type of flex line in here for you know to absorb some of that vibration to prevent this from happening. Um, so we'll, we'll think about different ways to go about doing that. And then we'll get this, once we get this fixed, we'll reset the dry valve and then we will um, see if this was our only problem because, you know, if this broke, obviously the compressor was running. Um, so I'm thinking there's probably a leak somewhere else also. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it could be, it was just running, just making up, you know, some pressure that's normal loss. Um, and then once this broke, if the check valve on the dry valve, let's see, get you in here. 
here. If this check valve's leaking by, then that would allow the uh, system air pressure to come back through all of this line. And then leak out of here. Um, so, and that check valve probably is leaking by. Those are notorious for it. So, so that wouldn't surprise me. And, and you know, it, it took it an hour from low air till it tripped. So that would make sense to me that that check valve's leaking by a little bit and it let it out. Uh, your other thing is, let's say the rare chance that check valve actually held. Then we got a leak somewhere because in an hour we should not have lost enough pressure for it to trip. Start by getting this uh, compression fitting loose back here. This goes over to the uh, pressure switch. There's absolutely no room in there. Imagine that. I think what I will do on this compressor is uh, I'll go ahead and just put a circ check back in there um, like it's been modified and then I think what I'll do is go ahead and add this flex hose on it um, but it's in quite a bind if I was I don't want to go in here because they're kind of using this as a drip leg um, but you know, maybe if I go in and then turn this out the side and do a 90 down, we can do something like that, and that'll give me a little bit more of a radius so I don't have this hose in such a bind. Um, I think that would work pretty nice to come out like a 04 or something like that. So we'll plan on doing that. I'll go ahead and uh, try and get this apart. found this check valve on my van. I had taken off of an old air compressor uh, for this exact use one day. Uh, this would be perfect. It is used, but uh, this compressor, we have no idea what shape it's in. It ran uh, almost 10 hours straight, so it's probably not in the greatest shape now. Uh, it's an older compressor anyways. But So this is 3 eighths and that's half. Um, these were really common on these. I don't know if they still are on General Air. I don't know. But anyways, that's what's really supposed to be in there. So we'll get that in there and get this out. Uh, and then this will screw right in there. And I think we'll do that flex line like I was talking about. And this will be in great shape. So this will work, should work out really good. So I'll get this tore apart. This actually looks pretty clean. I might go ahead and just use that to come out the side. I'm gonna screw that back in to kind of help this bushing from uh, what we call egging on me. I don't want it to collapse. I don't want to, I don't want to crush it.
before I get too far, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the compressor real quick and just see that we're at least pumping air. But I'm sure it will. Doesn't sound horrible, so we'll go with it. Just wanna verify I'm correct on this. Yeah, so that fits in there and then, so that's three eighths to half. I'll have to see if I can get the shop to order me one of those and just keep it on the van. Go ahead and put the check valve back in. Pretty sure that that check valve that I had that was used actually came from this place and they got uh, two dry systems and we changed the other dry system, uh, well we changed the air compressor, pulled it and put in a nitrogen generator and I'm pretty sure the compressor was actually bad uh, but I'm pretty sure that's where I took that from. I'll go ahead and get this back on. So this will go on next. Give you a nice place to tie in a temporary air compressor also uh, assuming this didn't break off that wouldn't be very useful then okay let's reset this old junk central valve look in here uh, if you're not familiar with a differential pressure dry valve uh, basically it's pretty simple this inner area here is the water this uh, outer area is the air seal and this middle area here in between those is called the intermediate chamber that is usually atmospheric pressure you can see back, I think you can see it, uh, there is a hole in the intermediate chamber and that's going to run into your alarm line and over to like the mechanical ball drip 
And so that would normally not have pressure on it. When the system trips, it fills with water and that pressurizes the uh, alarm water flow pressure switch and lets you know the system's tripped. So the way this all works is when this clapper's shut, you gotta think, this if this inner area is your water pressure that's the amount of water pushing up against it and then the whole top side of this clapper is air so you have a lot more surface area on that top than you do on the bottom so they're typically uh, i don't know what the central valve is but like six to one uh, ratio is fairly common i believe um like i said i do not know what this old central valve is but anyways, let me get my glove on, because that is always a mess in there. And we're just gonna do a quick wipe. Uh, I'll tell you, I do not put a whole lot of effort into these old central valves anymore. I just make sure we got the big stuff cleaned up on them, because you're almost more likely to have a leak the cleaner you get them. They've kind of set uh, grooves sometimes in the rubber from, you know, whatever. Anyways, I have had worse luck by cleaning those really good. So I've reset this valve quite a few times. And I know it doesn't set up on its own. We're going to have to put the... Uh, put a uh, ball valve on the mechanical ball drip. Oh yeah, that's crunchy. This is all gotta, we gotta do a trip test on this still uh, today. Anyways, so, you know, if you can picture that little surface of the water pushing on it, and then you got this great big surface area for the air. So that's why you can have less air pressure than water pressure and the air will still hold the water back if that makes sense clear as mud so just kind of do a quick wipe on this like i said i'm opening this thing back up because we're going to do a trip test if you have a leak on a dry system you know the compressor is running too much and you've searched the whole attic uh first off i would recommend your can't find it definitely you'd be switching over to ultrasonic leak detection but let's say you still can't find anything uh, actually before you even start looking for them uh, check your uh, mechanical ball drip or uh, velocity check or whatever you want to call it see if there's any air leaking out of it especially if you're dealing with one of these old central valves I have come across quite a few of them that it's leaking past the air seal and then to the intermediate chamber and then out. And unfortunately, you gotta tell the customer they need a new dry valve at that point. Because you're not likely to find a new uh, rubber seat for the clapper. You might know of someone, but you might know a guy. Actually, I know where one is, uh, but as you saw when I pushed on that clapper, uh, a little crunchy, a lot of times it's actually the clapper has rotted away. Uh, yeah, this is probably a 90, something, 99 or so. I don't, I don't know for sure, I can't see it. But anyways. That's usually what happens, so no parts, just going to have to replace the drive out. So I've already been down this road with this valve. She's on her last leg. Uh, actually, I think both legs are broken at this point. It's in a wheelchair, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get this set up so all I do is pull that velocity check mechanical ball drip whatever you want to call it I, even, I think there's even another name and we'll go ahead and close this for now and that'll allow me to because it just leaks right past the 
air seat. But when I get a little bit of air pressure on it, this valve typically holds and nothing else leaks. But I know one of these times it's gonna be done. All right, these old central valves never had a fill cup. I don't understand that. Uh, hey, here's the pull this plug. Pour some water in there. For years, I have used a five gallon bucket to get my water. I really don't know why. Actually, for like 20 years I've done that. Uh, it's just how I was taught, I guess. I always did use a coffee cup or something to dip out of. But uh, anyways, one day I, there was a milk jug laying there and I used it. And I thought, why haven't I done this a long time ago? So now I'm using an old washer, windshield washer fluid jug, but it works great. I shut the ball valve going up to the alarm pressure switch because like I said, I know that's gonna leak by and we have that velocity check, mechanical ball drip, whatever, uh, pulled and we got that ball valve in there. So then that pressure is gonna go up to the switch and I have the alarms bypassed. However, there's a 120 volt bell that would ring the whole time. So shut that off and we'll start filling. <laughs> Like I thought, there's a leak in the system, caused that air compressor to run excessively, then that check valve broke off, and then they ignored the low air, hour later system tripped. All right, I was able to get that temporary clamp on there and it held, I'm very surprised. All right, I got over on the other side here and got a better look at it. It won't be as bad as I was thinking. Uh, it's still not gonna be fun. So luckily, you know, this mechanical T, I saw two inch, very, it's a two inch line running over, but it just goes up and drops to this one head. So that won't be bad. Um, and then we got a Vic right here. And means that's drywall. We might be able to get it to kick over enough and slide out of there. Uh, so if that happens, then it won't be too bad. But worst case, I gotta take this piece out and it has a the same thing. There's a two inch line, but it's just for that one head. And then it, I don't know if you can see down there, it, it ties into a T, so we shouldn't have to worry about pipe being bad. Um, I'll probably, it, it's probably best just to go ahead and do both these. I'll get that out of my way and uh, give me plenty of room to get this all in and then it's going to need replaced eventually anyways it'll be the next piece so we'll see but that'll be our options i'm not going to measure this up i'll just coj it here and uh yeah we'll be back to do that system is up to pressure so we will go ahead and get this out of here i'm going to open up that quarter inch valve on the airline, get that pressure off, and then open this one, uh, one thing I'll do, I'll go ahead and close the alarm drain vent. Just gonna put my hand over this for just a second. Uh, I just wanna make sure we're not leaking any air by. And that's nothing built up, so that's good. So we know it did seat, everything's sealed. If you, you know, after, if you have to set one up like this, do that, and if you get a puff of air back, then once you're up to pressure, then that means it did not set up, so. Uh, you can attempt opening it up and cleaning that better. You might get lucky, but my experience has been <clears throat> when you clean those, you have more problems than if you just leave it. Because it's like, you know, stuff's built up in there. Unless you're the one that's reset it every single time and you've always kept it clean, then yes, do it. 
but if not then there's a good chance something got built up in there and there's just not much rubber around there it's almost like an o-ring and it doesn't take much of an indentation in it to cause a leak so if there's a little piece of debris and it's put a little mark into that seal and then you clean that away now air leaks by so i've just had better luck uh, not really cleaning them super good just a quick wipe around there with my hand and be done with it this doesn't even hit that and this valve needs to be replaced but uh i mean it's just old and we have troubles with it however i mean it's not that difficult to do this and i can get it set up but if i got a puff of air back i'm you know and that'll happen one of these days and then i'm just gonna have to tell them uh you know deliver the bad news um and i'll give them a heads up you know they need to be thinking about this valve getting replaced but nobody will worry about that until it has to be done go ahead and uh, set this valve up I have no idea why those gauges are facing that way, uh, but, <laughs> but whatever. I've done this enough, I'm not too worried about it. I've got the fire pump, it's still in the auto position, so I'm gonna hope that I can do this. The jockey will keep up. There we go. So that's it for um, that service call. Still have to come back and replace that piece of pipe, but the compressor seems to be good. I did time it and uh, it was like 28 minutes for it to get up to pressure. Uh, I think that's pretty consistent with what it has been in the past, so um, I don't think we have any issues with that compressor. Uh, it seems like even though it ran there for quite a few hours straight, it's still good to go so everything's good here uh, appreciate you guys watching um, if you would please like and subscribe when you hit the subscribe button I mean all that does is it'll it'll put when I put a new video out it'll put it into your feed and, and then uh, it helps the uh, algorithm to where it puts uh, our the videos out to more people helps get everything uh, built up more people seeing it and if you click on the bell, you can get alerts whenever um, I put a new video out. So again, thanks for watching.